everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Cecily as always, and today is going to be another rather passionate video, I can already tell. So I want to start with giving you a number, 250,000. That is the number estimated by Johns Hopkins University, people who die every year in the United States from medical errors. That is the third leading cause of death. Kind of shocking, I think for anyone, a sobering number. I am part of that system in a major way. I rely upon medical care to live. I am a, an example of a young person who will always need the medical system to live. Now, I've accepted that fact. I've accepted that I need to relinquish some of my control and give it to the doctors that help me. I've relinquished so much of my time and given them so much of my patience and put so much of my trust in their hands trusting and hoping that they were capable, reliable, and competent. And what I've been shown in return is apathy. It's evasiveness, greed, selfishness. I've seen all of these in the medical system, from secretaries all the way up to doctors, hospital administrators, and I've seen it even in the legislators who control how our healthcare system works. That's unacceptable. Now I realize we don't live in a perfect world, there's no way to ensure that everyone gets perfect care. But what I can tell you is that in this world, we all, every human, are offered the decision to care or to not care. I feel like a lot of the people that I've dealt with in the medical care system don't care. They make that choice every day not to care. You can do your job and still not care, but you can't do your job terribly well, can you? Well, I feel like these doctors have no incentive to do their job well because I, as a patient, have no say over what they do. This is weighing heavily on my mind because I am a PIC line user. I have a PIC line, as I've mentioned. It's really helpful for me. It's what lets me get my hydration every day and week, and it keeps me alive. I'm really thankful for it. But PIC lines are dangerous, as much as they help people because they have a propensity to become infected. They're difficult to keep perfectly sanitary, and I've had mine for over a year now, and it's been, or just about a year, and it's been really helpful in that time, and I've kept it very clean, and I've been really careful with it. But these things happen. Sometimes you will get an infection from whatever might be wrong, and um, you need to treat it. Treatment is what matters here, and quick treatment is what matters here. They need to address the problem quickly. So I, as a patient, identified the problem, and I said to my PIC line nurse, who comes every week to help me um, maintenance the PIC line, I said, hey, I have a rash and it's itching and I think it's getting serious. And she agreed. So I talked to my primary doctor, he's out of town, he sent me to the ER. That ER visit was one of the most pathetic excuses for an ER visit that I've ever endured in my entire life. I walked in there with a rash of my PIC line and I walked out with nothing. I thought I was walking out with a referral to interventional radiology, which are the people that basically do pick lines. They insert them and they take them out and they are in charge of helping people who have infections of their pick lines or any other issue. I didn't even get that referral. We found out today. We were on the phone, my mom and I, for hours talking to people, um, just begging for help. And we finally found out that the CR doctor that I saw was so negligent that he did not even place an order and he did not even see that he didn't place the order. He didn't even try. <laughs> he didn't even ask someone. Now, apparently it's because he didn't know how to place the order. Well then find out. It's that simple. I've had things happen in my career as a student where I didn't know how to do them and I had to look it up or I had to ask someone for help. You have to be humbled for a moment every now and then in your job and say, I don't know how to do this, but I need to find someone who can. That's what I'm missing. That's what all my doctors tend not to do. They're perfectly willing to admit that they can't help me, but they're not willing to humble themselves enough to ask someone who can. I ask, what is the point of a job if you don't even care about it? What is the point of having a job where your sole purpose is to save people if you don't even care about seeing them safe? I know I'm not the only person affected by this, I've met a lot of people in my family and otherwise who feel let down by the medical system, who feel like they're a football being punted around, who feel like they're an object, who feel like they're cattle being herded around, but never actually being led anywhere. That's how I feel. That's how I wake up every day. 
That's how I feel when I'm on the phone for hours with these doctors, receptionists, secretaries, nurses, begging for help and hearing no, getting it spat back in my face. Like I'm the one wrong for asking for help. Shocking disgusting and it's an arrogance and an apathy that I'm not willing to tolerate. I'm always very civil with doctors and I always respect them so much because they go through years of school, they go through years of trying to be the best at what they do and then when they get there their one job is to help people. But when I'm the person who's supposed to be helped and I feel let down, and I feel like I might become one of the 250,000 people in our country who die every year of medical mistakes, or being lost in the system, or having so many referrals hurtled around that I don't even know which way's up. There's a problem here. There's a huge problem here. It's massive, it's gargantuan, and yet it goes silently undiscussed. My medical system here, where my local area, has a lot of, uh, commercials and ads and brochures and whatnot in which the patients are displayed as being happy and pleased with their care and jovial with their doctors and nurses. But then I look around my actual waiting room after seeing these commercials and I see people sad, I see people tired, and I see people who are fed up. The further you get into the hospital rabbit hole, the scarier things get. I've torn back the mask and I've seen what they actually have lurking underneath, which is this system that thrives on apathy and encourages their patients to be apathetic as well. They encourage them to just keep taking painkillers until the problem goes away. That's apathy too. Telling your patients to treat the symptoms and not actually helping them treat the problems, that's part of apathy. That is conditioned apathy. We are experiencing conditioned apathy. Every time we walk into a doctor's office and walk out with a script for a prescription to help the symptom, but not the cause. I have irritable bowel syndrome. It's a syndrome. There's no histological understanding of why my condition exists. No one can tell me what the pathology is, or why it is the way it is, or why it's untreatable. All they can tell me is that it's untreatable. They won't send me to anyone who can treat it. They don't give me referrals to people who seem to be willing. They don't give me referrals to people who are even experts in what I have. They send me to people who are willing to write a prescription. I've done a lot of pushing down my feelings about how doctors have treated me in the past and the way they've been flippant with my case and the way that they've been flippant with the case of my mother and my sister who are both also very sick. And I'm starting to get very tired of it. And I assume you are too if you're watching this video. I assume that you also feel a fire in your gut that just makes you angry that no one is willing to help you. Able, one thing. Willing, another. And I'm wondering how many of these 250,000 deaths in the United States are because people cannot be willing, they can't be bothered to help their patients. They are turned away at the door, they are given sass on the phone and hang up because they're frustrated. And then, then what do you do? This is a system that is built to make you exhausted. At least that's my impression. The further I dig down, the more I ask for help, the more I'm turned away. The worse my condition gets, the more frequently I've been referred to doctors and tossed around, my God. What a reversal of how it should be. Since my condition has become more life-threatening and serious over the past two years of my life, Things have gotten harder for me in the medical system. It's gotten harder for me to see doctors. It's gotten harder for me to see the right doctors. And it's gotten harder for me to get any treatment. That is the opposite of how it should be. It should become so important to these doctors to save a life that they're willing to do anything, willing to do anything to help save their patients. They should be able to admit without this hubris that they have, some of them, I can't help you, but here's who can. Here's a referral to who can. And if they say no, I want you to come back to me and I want to keep working with you to, false, to solve this. I want them to want to help me because I am willing to do anything to get the health care that I need. I will have gone under the knife. I have taken drugs that have made me 
sad and that have given me bad side effects and that have made me sicker just for the pursuit of a cure or a remedy or even alleviation of the pain. I am spat in the face by these doctors who seem to think that the only thing that matters is getting me out of their office and getting on to the next patient. That should not be their goal in the day. All I want to know is that they think about my case or me for even five seconds after I leave their office. Just that little bit of reassurance that they're even thinking about me when I'm gone would be helpful. But something tells me that that is not what happens when I leave that door, when I leave that office, when I walk out of there feeling defeated like I've done so many days of my life. I'm not happy and I'm fed up with it. And I don't want to join the third leading cause of death in this country just because my doctors cannot be bothered. Just because they don't understand the problem doesn't give them a reason not to try to fix it. And if you're another misunderstood case out there, there are many, I'm so sorry. And I'm so sorry for what you must have endured. You're not wrong for asking for help. You're not wrong for being upset when you don't get it. You're only wrong if you don't try to. And something tells me a lot of you have tried but if you're similar to me and have been pushed around from doctor to doctor, being told this guy has the cure, no, this guy has the cure, no, this guy has the cure, everyone's pointing fingers in the opposite direction, and you're the one left out. You're the one left on the sidelines, on the periphery, being made to feel like you're crazy because no one has a cure, no one has a solution, no one even has a name for what you have, and they're not even willing to try to help you. All I want is compassion. All I want is passion. All I want is for them to care about helping us. All I want is for that 250,000 number to go down drastically. I think it would if people just cared. Now I'll disclaim, this is not an attack on every doctor. I've had incredible ones, as I've mentioned before. But out of all the doctors I've had, I can safely say that the majority of them did not care. That their top priority was getting me off their docket and onto the next patient. In the door and out, herded like cattle. We're part of a broken system. We're part of a broken set of ideals. My grandfather was a doctor and my grandma told me that his patients were like his family. That they cared about those patients like they were a part of their own family. He was a great doctor. I never met him, but I know he was a great doctor. And it makes me sad that People like him, doctors who join for the right reasons and who really care and who become doctors because they know it's the right thing for them to do with their lives, makes me sad that they're pushed down by the system too. They're told to meet their bottom line, see all the patients they can in the allotted time and just get through the day. They're conditioned to be apathetic. And we as patients are conditioned to be apathetic as well. I've been told by my doctors to stop being sad. I can't not be sad. Because this is a sad, sad state of affairs that we're in. Something tells me that it's not just me that's had this problem. Something tells me that you out there watching this have at one point in your lives been belittled by a doctor have at one point in your lives been punted around from doctor to doctor, telling you that you have a syndrome, telling you that you have whatever, telling you you're a hypochondriac, that is grounds for breaking trust. My doctors, not all of them, but many of them, have broken my trust. I know they don't care the way that I need them to care. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I can't imagine the burden it must be to take other people's lives into your hands. It's, I assume it's similar to having a child and feeling responsible for them. So I'm not criticizing doctors or the profession. What I'm criticizing is doctors who say that they want to help you, but don't. 